So we'll get started. So I wanted to thank you uh, everyone for joining us today. So we're pretty excited about this presentation to you. It's our first virtual panel discussion. And you have all no doubt been affected by this pandemic that's taking place around the world. We've been pretty lucky here in Manitoba and we're ahead of all other provinces in terms of recovery. So, so kudos to our, our province for keeping us safe. So just yesterday, I took part in a virtual conference when uh, Dr. Brent Rusin, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name, he's the Manitoba Chief Provincial Health Officer. And on the call, it was through the Manitoba Chambers of Commerce and the Winnipeg Chambers of Commerce. So there were a lot of questions about group gatherings and regulations around that. Um, I won't <clears throat> get into it now. But if you have specific questions about that group gatherings, I can point you in the right direction. So it was pretty enlightening. <clears throat> <coughs> so recent events have caused a shift, not only in our personal lives, but in the tourism industry. And to help you navigate through all these communications, Eastman Tourism has put together this panel of experts. So each panelist brings to the table an aspect of the tourism industry. So there's a lot there's a lot involved in tourism. It's not just opening a business and providing experiences to your to your visitors. So just a few administration items. Stay on mute unless you're asking a question. You can use the chat box at the bottom if you prefer. So I'll be monitoring that as much as I can. Um, Questions will all be answered after each panelist has finished their presentation and also at the very end. And feel free to turn your video on when you're, when you're speaking, <clears throat> but if you're shy, you don't have to. Um, so today our panelists include, I'm going to see if this is gonna work, Dallas. My next slide, there we go. Well, you're a little bit cut off there, but that's okay. So today our panelists, we include Lindsay Egan of Travel Manitoba. <clears throat> so her talk will be about the, um, uh, what's happening in the recovery from the, from the provincial perspective, and she'll be talking about their new campaign. We also have Leslie Godry. She's an economic development officer, and she also works with uh, Bonjour Manitoba. So she'll be speaking to the economic development and uh, tourism uh, connection. We also have Dallas Mitchell from ZAM Communications and he'll be speaking about marketing for your business and not for profits. And we also have Lindsay Otto on the call from Community Futures Winnipeg River. So she'll be going over all the different services that they provide businesses. And then I'll present at the very end. Okay, hey, so we're gonna get started. And our first presenter today, so we're gonna introduce to you now, uh, Lindsay Egan, and she's with Travel Manitoba. So um, yeah, so take it away, Lindsay. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Jenny, for being Travel Manitoba to be a part of this session this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lindsay Egan and I am uh, one of the coordinators, excuse me, one of the coordinators for the partnership and visitor experiences team at Travel Manitoba. Um, my manager, Tracy Dandino, um, was going to be here delivering this today, but um, unfortunately she had another conflict, so she's asked me to step in. So thank you, Jenny, for letting me join you guys today. So, present to you the building the tourism recovery plan. Travel Manitoba is working very closely with Destination Canada, which is devoting uh, most of its effort to understanding the impact this crisis is having on the tourism industry. But there are still many unknowns. Uh, how deep the impact will be and how long recovery will take uh, are still quite unclear. Despite the lack of complete information, it's quite clear the impact will be profound and pervasive and will severely affect all segments of the tourism sector, including group travel, leisure, business, visiting friends and relatives, as well as day trips and overnight stays. 
Travel Manitoba's return to active marketing aims to mitigate this impact and stimulate demand for travel experiences in Manitoba. You can go to the next slide. Can you see it there? Uh, no, there might be a bit of a lag, but I'll just continue to talk and hopefully it loads up. No problem. Um, our building the tourism recovery plan is based on three phases, respond, rebuild, and restart. Since the pandemic was announced, we have been responding to the immediate needs of the tourism industry, providing information and listening to your challenges. We supported the stay home message on our social media and website, and we paused all of our paid marketing activities, including our partnership activities. This pause allowed us to have more resources available for our recovery uh, campaign. Um, so we'll go to the slide three. So if it's not working here, if it's lagging on, on Jenny's end there, don't worry, we can share this presentation with everybody um, after the meeting as well. So with the province's restoring safe services plan moving forward, Travel Manitoba has also moved forward on to phase two of our plan, which is, as I mentioned, rebuild. This is our first step in resuming marketing activities with our immediate focus on encouraging Manitobans to travel within the province. Manitoba travelers are important to the tourism economy, accounting for a majority of the visitation and expenditures. 84% of the pre-pandemic tourism spending in Manitoba was from domestic tourism. Hyperlocal tourism made up the largest portion of this spend with 540 million spent on same day travel within Manitoba. A further 417 million was spent on overnight travel by Manitobans within Manitoba. And then another 420 million in spending came from Canadian visitors from out of the province. So there's a lot going on in this slide with a lot of numbers. Um, this will be a good one you guys can reference back to when we send it out afterward. A focus on hyper-local and local and overnight intra-provincial travel has the potential to significantly impact local businesses and kickstart the tourism sector. This shift in focus will also mitigate the loss of visitors from international markets in 2020. In accordance with border closures and public health recommendations, we are executing a campaign with a strong call to action for Manitobans to travel within the province. Next slide, please, Jenny. The goal of our in-province campaign is to increase tourism visitation and expenditures within Manitoba by creating high quality content and advertising that promotes bookable experiences and attractions, adjusting as the supply of experiences uh, become more readily available. The theme will be tied to our Manitoba Canada's Heartbeats brand and motivate Manitobans to travel in Manitoba. Next slide, please. Home is where the heart is, aligns with our overarching brand of Canada's Heartbeats and is the natural next step following the stay home messaging that we have been running. Now we want to showcase the experiences that make us love Manitoba and the people we love to share them with and encourage Manitobans to spend their summers here. This is an example here um, of a brand awareness ad that we might use in this campaign. I'll read you uh, the copy here to give you a sense of the motivational messaging. So here's what the copy may read. Let's find a new normal. Let's venture to rediscover the places we love to explore right here at home in Manitoba. Grab the people who mean most to you and set out to experience the best of what our province has to offer. We can have our hearts set on things returning to how they used to be, or we can remind ourselves that home is where the heart is. This summer, show Manitoba some love. This summer, explore home. Next slide, please. Yeah. Nice. So campaign tactics will allow for the speed of the execution and will be uh, produced while maintaining social distancing regulations. They will also allow us to pivot quickly should public health regulations change. Our initial stages of the campaign execution focus on our website and our social media channels. We created a home is where the heart is hub on our website. Um, so if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out. And it highlights all the great ways that Manitobans can safely explore their province um, in actual time. 
This hub also features content highlighting the virtual experiences that many of our partners are continuing to offer. In addition, we're working with our website provider and our partners to be able to clearly identify which businesses are currently open for business, making it easier for consumers to browse the site and plan their trips. We encourage all of you who uh, have listings on our website to make sure you log in uh, to the extranet uh, through SimpleView and update any of your information, your operating hours, your policies, and we'll ensure that the most accurate information is up on our website. Should anybody have uh, questions about how to log into SimpleView or how to access their listing, you can email me directly um, and I'll help you get in there and kind of walk you through it. So last mm -hmm. week, uh, Travel Manitoba started um, paid advertising again uh, with radio ads across Southern Manitoba. These ads promote the new campaign theme and highlight activities like camping, fishing, visiting museums, road trips, and restaurants. We have also compiled an extensive list of existing and new content for our social media channels. In addition to sharing information from our partners relating to their specific opening and operating details, we have a variety of blog posts, videos, and local trip itineraries to inspire Manitobans to travel. Next slide, please. In stage three of our in-province campaign, we will launch a comprehensive digital marketing campaign featuring search, social, video, and display ads, um, such as an example here on the uh, bottom of this slide. In this stage, we will extend our campaign to include advertorial in local newspapers and advertising on outdoor billboards. We are also looking to do advertising through connected TV as an alternative to traditional broadcast television advertising. We are looking at engaging in some meaningful content publishing partnerships to help extend the reach of our message. Did you want me to go into further detail on the Partner Extra Net now, Jenny, or? Yeah, sure, whenever it works for you. Okay, well, I'll finish up this slide and then I'll go back to the Partner Extra Net there. Um, so again, in stage three here, our content marketing campaign will also ramp up, resuming regular investment uh, levels in paid amplification of our content on social media, including blog posts, videos, and province-wide road trips. And details of our reimagined influencer campaign and contest were released last week. I'm not sure if anyone has seen that on our social media over the past week about winning the $500 to offset your um, close to home trip. So we're asking locals to show Manitoba some love with the chance of $500 to offset their costs. For share, just for sharing their experiences on social media. No need to be a photographer, professional influencer. We're looking to promote the diverse voices of Manitoba who love to explore our province. So I have mm -hmm. a few more here, but I can go back if we want to talk about Partner Extranet. Jenny, what do you think? Sure, yeah, let's start with that. Yeah. Okay, was there, was there a specific yeah. question what it was, or do you want me to just explain what it is in general? Yeah, just in general, because some people aren't familiar with it yet. Sure. Yeah. So um, any business, organization, attraction, accommodation, uh, you name it, in Manitoba is entitled to a free listing on TravelManitoba.com. Now those listings um, that you can submit are, and a new listing or register a, a business through TravelManitoba.com. Um, I can send around a link of how to do that. And basically it gives you a big template to plug in all the information about your business, operating hours, amenities, location, um, geographic map location, um, contact information. Uh, you can list all the different employees for your organization. And then you can write a blurb about your actual business. And that's what shows up on our website. So when people are scrolling through, uh, let's say um, museums, for example, you can register your museum on there and have a free listing. Now, SimpleView is the um, partner extranet that we have uh, chosen to work with that allows us to be able to access that information, but it also allows each partner to have a unique login so that they can go and access their information um, as often as they like. So when you create a listing, you automatically have a username and password generated, and then you're welcome to change that. And every year I have partners, I forgot my password, that is okay, we can reset it for you and we can help you log in to make those changes. And that's where you can upload images so that Travel Manitoba also has the use of those images for our marketing or any of our social media. Um, those show up on the website with your listing as well. 
and you can update your information that appears on our website as often as you like. Um, so if anyone says, oh, hey, I have a business, but I don't have a listing on TravelManitoba.com, um, you can connect with me after this and I'll help set you up so that we can get you up there. And if you do have a listing and you're wondering how you can change it, um, I can send you your username and password and uh, you can log in and kind of poke around in the back end and see where you can make some changes. So um, mm -hmm. it's a easy way for you to keep your uh, information on our website as up to date and current as possible. Great, thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, no problem. Again, if you have more questions on that, just let me know. I know it can be a bit overwhelming. <laughs> All right, we'll yeah. go to the next mm -hmm. one, Benny. Okay, so we have set aside a considerable portion of our marketing budget, um, $1 million for the execution of this in province campaign, plus another $1 million for expanding the campaign to neighboring provinces in the next stage of our marketing efforts. And then as well, for the first time ever, uh, Destination Canada is investing in the marketing recovery efforts um, of provincial and territorial marketing uh, organizations. So Destination Canada's new uh, national co-op marketing program is providing additional funds to support Travel Manitoba's in-province campaign, which is great. Uh, Travel Manitoba will be providing content and data from our campaign, helping Destination Canada to build their supply of assets for future campaigns. So they'll be getting a lot of our creative that they can use for their uh, bigger marketing uh, platforms. We're very excited about this opportunity and um, we're very pleased that uh, we were the first province to sign the agreement with Destination Canada under this new program. So that will be really great going forward. We're also exploring options to secure <clears throat> financial support from Western diversification under the Tourism Alliance of Western Canada. While in the initial discussion phase, any investment would be a cost shared between members of the Alliance. So BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. We are currently evaluating the opportunity and uh, no decision has been made in terms of that partnership just yet. Next slide, please. So once travel restrictions are removed, our message will be modified to encourage close to home travel in near markets like Northwestern Ontario and Saskatchewan. And when it's safe to do so, we will re-enter the final phase, or we will enter the final phase of our building the tourism recovery plan, which is restart. And that is when we will begin to expand our campaign internationally and begin marketing in those markets again. While there is potential that international travel may not resume until 2021, we look forward to restarting activities with the media and trade in those markets. And our trade team is still in touch with all of their um, connections out there and continuing to get reports and updates on, on the activity that's going on internationally. Next slide, please. So in addition to our marketing efforts, our team has also been hard at work identifying ways to support you, all of our tourism partners. On our tourism industry website, um, which I've linked up right here, and again, we can send it around to everyone after the fact, um, we have two very uh, important resources up there for everyone. The first is the, um, basically a summary of the province's restoring safe services guidelines specific to the tourism industry. So this can be a really helpful tool to identify the requirements that each sector of our industry should be putting in place as they're starting to look at reopening and opening back to the public. The second resource uh, outlines funding and assistance, pro assistance programs available by the different levels. Oh, there's a question here. I'll finish the slide here and then we'll get to that question, Jenny. The second resource outlines funding and assistance programs available by different levels of government and other organizations. Um, one of our first priorities during this crisis was to advocate for programs to fill the funding gaps and slowly those gaps are narrowing, but we know they're not closed yet. So we're continuing to advocate for those tourism industry that are, uh, and, and we are in regular contact with both the provincial and uh, federal ministers. So these documents uh, continue to be updated on a regular basis as new information becomes available. Our team is busy updating that to provide the most current information. Um, so we do encourage our partners to continue to get in touch with us to share uh, the issues they are facing as we work together to rebuild the tourism industry. 
And the final slide, just thank you and questions. Um, that was a brief overhaul of sort of our recovery plan and I'm happy to share it with everyone and answer any questions. I see that Sean had a question and thank you Elise for jumping in there. I don't know if, if that's been resolved or if it wants to be asked again. Um, you can ask questions here, you can email questions. Um, Elise from our office is also on the call so she can help answer if there's anything. Great, thank you, Lindsay. So there's, Lindsay's uh, email is there. If you have any questions uh, after this presentation, feel free to email her. Um, Yes, so we are going to move on to the next uh, presenter. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I really appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. Now, let's see. Okay, so now we are moving on to Lindsay Gaudry, uh, Economic Development Officer, and she works with uh, Bojo, Manitoba. And I'm going to just pull up her slide presentation, so bear with me. Okay, great. Well, I think I'll get started. My name's Leslie Godry, and I, I'm an, been an EDO practitioner for 12 years, and a lot of uh, economic development work cross links with tourism. Currently, right now, I'm doing a contract with SEDEM, the Francophone Economic Development Agency, uh, doing some development of tourism experiences. So, Jenny, if you want to go to the next slide. We're going to talk about sort of that tourism and local government connections. So the first, um, I guess the first part just to start off with is that with your, with your local government, whether you're a business or a non-for-profit organization, um, you've, you've been hit by COVID. And I think one step in the recovery is connecting with your local municipality. I think that connection will strengthen your local as well as your social position of your business. But before we jump into talking about the connection with tourism, whether you're a business or non for profit and government, is that there are some assumptions that you should know. So the first one is finding your advocate or your ally. So that means finding a person within the government organization that is aware of what you do and cares about what you do. And having that personal connection, that personal advocate is very important. And it could be the chief administrative officer. It could be um, a recreation professional. It could be your local um, EDO, if your municipality has one. Um, but it's really important to have that personal connection, that advocate within the system. <laughs> the second point is to be aware that there is a process for local government um, and local government has to work within a system that's been set by the Municipal Act. And local government does not work as fast as private business or, um, or as some non-for-profits. So you just have to be aware of that, that speed, that there is a process and um, it's important to understand that you have to work within the speed of that process. And then once you have those two, um, there's some really great synergies that can happen. Next slide. So the first step, um, maybe this is review for quite a few people, but if not, um, it's, it's interesting to know is that when you start a partnership um, and a relationship with your local government, you really want to know where they're at. Um, you know your business the best, but it's important to find out where your business fits within that system. So the first step is asking yourself, where does tourism stand within your local government? and organizations documents. So does your municipality have a strategic plan? If they do, ask for a copy, review it, and see is tourism a priority within your municipal system? Um, in your community development corporation, a lot of municipalities, I mean we have over 70 active uh, CDCs in the province. Where is tourism within those community uh, development corporation strat plans? Once you find out if you're a priority, um, if tourism is a priority or not, um, that's great. You can start working within that. If it's not, the next step is maybe having a conversation with your local government or your CDC and saying, okay, if, we, if it's not on the radar yet or people have thought about it, um, start with a tourism SWOT analysis. Um, everybody's aware of SWOTs. Um, see if you can, if you can do one. Um, ask your CFs for help, your community futures offices for help. Um, SEDEM is there. 
Travel Manitoba, reach out to any one of us and we, you know, we'll help you steer you in the right direction about getting a tourism SWOT analysis done. It doesn't have to be complicated, but what it does is it allows you to understand where your strengths and your weaknesses are. And um, it also helps identify, I think, some, some of those key gems that are going to help make your place or your business um, even more relevant on the local context. So that means highlighting musicians, your artists, um, anybody that has a talent that you can connect with that's going to help um, elevate that, that uh, offering that you have. And it also helps form more partnerships. And sometimes if you're a small business within a rural municipality, you're going to have to think bigger, right? There's your local environment, but you're going to have to think regionally. What is your nearest retail sector? What's a cluster around you? Um, and then that can help steer, uh, steer you in the right direction. Moving to slide number two, or three, I guess. So once uh, you figure out what your local government is at with tourism development. Um, the next point is policy creates capacity. So working with local governments um, and developing that advocacy relationship, you can really help build the understanding of tourism and why it's valuable. Because when we, we all know this, that tourism isn't just one sector. There's multiple sectors within tourism, transportation, accommodation, food sector, um, entertainment attractions. So with all of those different business sectors being affected, you could say it would be important to have a tourism policy at your local government level. And if you don't have one, work with your work with your municipality to create a tourism policy and then create a tourism committee. This is only one avenue or one way of doing it. Um, but some communities that have been successful doing that is the Stuart Byrne, you know, the RM of Stuart Byrne and Piney with their Sunrise Corner Initiative, Brosager and Broken Head, they have a BBDC tourism committee as well as in the St. Anne's, RM of St. Anne's at Dawson Trail Tourism Committee. So those are just some examples. But I think at the end, policy does create capacity and then you can future the or kind of set the stage for the future of, of more tourism development in your area with that. Moving forward. So when you're connecting with local governments, um, there's opportunities for marketing. So of course, I would say definitely reach out to Travel Manitoba. Well, to um, within your municipality, if they're aware that you're reaching out to Travel Manitoba, the more people that are involved in the conversation, the better. So reach out to Lindsay, reach out to Jenny, your, your local, so depending where you are in the province, your local RTAs or regional tourism associations. Um, find out they're all developing those co-op um, marketing initiatives that are gonna be very beneficial, especially for us local businesses, right? Um, the second avenue that you can do is a lot of municipalities, I know these are simple, um, but it's just sometimes worth repeating, is a lot of municipalities have newsletters and events, um, smaller events at this point, but you can connect with them and say they might, you know, might not be doing a joint event with the municipality, but the municipal, um, whether their staff or, or council are aware of your business, if it's a fit, they can do that word of mouth advertising for you. Um, Another thing I should have put in here that's not in the slide is a lot of local governments have very, um, they have good websites and a lot of them have tourism pages on their websites. So um, that's another one, say, say Tourism Morden or Nipua Tourism, right? It's a, it's a page or a sub page within the greater context. So people are visiting there. So those are worth developing and keeping up to date. Um, you can have local festivals and events where you're doing, you can partner with your local municipalities. Seasonal events are huge, right? You're bringing in, you have Christmas events, you have Halloween events um, that municipalities are either hosting or they have uh, networking events during those seasonal times. So don't forget about those um, as, as we move forward in the recovery. A lot of municipalities have social media and a lot of times, like everywhere, they're looking for content for their social media. So don't be scared to reach out to your local municipality and say, hey, I might be running this contest or I might be doing something and that can help, um, that can help elevate your business. The other uh, thing that isn't in here, but I also think is important is sometimes 
you can do a joint project that can focus on a niche tourism within the municipality. So an example of that is um, doing a heritage brochure in partnership with your municipality. That is, if it's highlighting a specific museum. So um, the uh, CDC in St. George has a wonderful heritage brochure that they've done in partnership. Um, the town of Carmen has a wonderful heritage brochure that they've done in partnership with their municipality that highlights, you know, it's just another avenue to highlight some very specific tourism attractions in their area. Something not to overlook, I know now every, uh, a lot of places are closed, but once things start to open up, advertising in facilities, so your baseball diamonds, your hockey arenas, those are all um, municipal facilities where there, there are I guess, uh, where did I cut out, Jenny? Uh, advertising in facilities. Okay, great. Well, that's just saying that there's a lot of visitors coming through there and there are opportunities for advertising and the municipalities like to have that additional revenue as well. And then electronic signage, um, they have special rates for businesses and non-for-profits. So moving on to memberships and networks. For small businesses, um, can't stress enough, especially in rural areas, um, belonging to some formal member, like having a formal membership, whether it's with your regional tourism association, your chamber of commerce, um, the Economic Developers Association of Manitoba, SADAM, Community Futures, um, even your industry associations, right? So Ma Paddle Manitoba, Manitoba Bed and Breakfast Association, um, having those um, connections and what you put into those organizations really helps um, develop stronger networks that can then be an advocate and a voice within your municipality. So we all know that more voices are stronger and it also helps so that you can touch base. Um, sometimes within that more formal network, you can create informal network or mentorship opportunities. There's, it might be something as simple as participating in Small Business Week, but it might also be uh, just going for coffee with somebody one time only and forming that. Moving on. Can you still hear me okay? We can, I can. Great, okay. Within local municipalities, it's important to understand that there is that connection with physical infrastructure with tourism and uh, tourism development and projects rely on good physical infrastructure. Um, if no one around the table at the RM is talking about tourism, there's a good chance that your infrastructure may not be set up for visitors or developed as best that it could be. So if RMs are making decisions on infrastructure for residents, try and take the conversation a little bit further and to see how you can develop it and make it um, a better experience for visitors. Um, one place to start would be to see is tourism in the strategic plan, is tourism also mentioned or tourism spaces and infrastructure mentioned in your development plan? Um, that's uh, a good way to start. Also just more obvious things like wayf wayfinding signage and placemaking signage. I call it the three P's. This is like placemaking 101, pocket parks, picnic areas, and public art, and having really good accessible public washrooms and facilities. Understanding where the money is going, so review your RM's financial plan, find out how they're funding, when they're funding their physical infrastructure projects, and is there an opportunity for the Community Development Corporation to partner with the municipality to maybe try one of the three P's? and help make your community more visitor friendly. Moving on. Mm -hmm. One thing I think that often gets overlooked, especially if you're a small business or a non-for-profit is how can you connect with your local municipality? And one way to do that is to look at your municipal or your CDC campgrounds. So seasonal and overnight visitors are coming to these campgrounds and there is an an opportunity to partner with them. So just some examples in St. Lazare, Cartier Park in St. Agathe, St. Jean-Baptiste, 
uh, St. Pierre the Cadillon uh, campground, Notre Dame de Lourdes, even Somerset. Um, they have beautiful campgrounds and we all know that um, the provincial park campgrounds are definitely going to be booked this summer, which is great. But if you're a little bit late in the booking or you need a bit more flexibility uh, when you're booking, try thinking about your municipal and your CDC campgrounds. And then as a business owner, how can you partner with these local accommodations and, and reach out and extend your reach? And a lot of times word of mouth or a brochure um, or even these local campgrounds have Facebook pages that can that can go a long way. Next mm -hmm. slide. <clears throat> Within the municipal system, there's this is slide I just threw in as a niche tourism opportunity. So there are municipalities that do very specific niche tourism uh, very well. So these are just some examples and there's many more out there, but paddling, the RM of Whitemouth and Emerson Franklin, they have canoe maps. They have public access areas with um, the maps, you know, garbage and recycling receptacles, very simple things, but the picture is at Stuart Burn Bridge. You can park your vehicle, access the water. Um, for cycling, the Northgate trail system in Dauphin, huge partnership with the local municipality and the local uh, bike club to get that done. Um, wonderful facility. Nipua is working on a fantastic uh, trail system that is going to have cycling as well as a lot of other um, sports and recreation opportunities there. Fishing, heritage, St. Clements has a great heritage committee um, that is a mm -hmm. uh, committee within their municipal committees that have websites and projects that highlights their local heritage infrastructure um, culinary so nipua they had josh mcfadden there if you check out the nipua tourism um, on facebook their video that's a culinary initiative that they did so those are just some examples moving on to slide eight This might be review for everyone, but as a small business and within your local municipality, whether it's for counselors or for staff um, and for all your nonprofit volunteers, there is free training right now. So World Trade Center Winnipeg, MTAC Cooperatives First, eMerit has free, um, you can sign on and get free courses right now. There's webinars, virtual cafes. So connecting to free education at this point is, is a great way to help extend your reach, just not on the knowledge base, but you get to meet other people, especially if there's breakout rooms um, and you can connect. And to finish, within your local municipality, um, we talked about the social media, um, you know, really about that online and virtual experiences. We did a whole webinar just on that. And I can't stress enough the, the importance of, of having online and virtual experiences, whether you're a small business or a museum or a non for profit. It's you're generating cash flow, you have new markets, and you're creating products, online products and services that could then be used after the pandemic. Um, I have, we have the web link for the, the webinar for that. And it's really just a, a good, a good practice at this point to have good quality images and presentations. And I put a few lists of three different, uh, three different, uh, places you can use or links that you can use to help you with that. I think to summarize, you can build and leverage your network as a small business. You can extend your reach by working with your municipality and really find the person who can help you build a relationship with that person and you can uh, get everyone interested in what you have to offer. And that'll, that's the end. If, any, if there's any questions or I can be reached after as well. All right, Leslie, I was kind of slow on your slides there. <laughs> so there's Leslie's address. If you have any further questions for her, um, there was one comment in the chat from Sean Michaels. 
He said that here in Broken Head, we just launched our heritage microsite uh, created by Russ Cabrera, the local wood carver. So he's, um, Russ Cabrera, he does a lot for the community of Broken Head and um, Osager. He's also uh, involved with the glassworks there. So he's um, a tourism champion in that community. Well, thank you so much, Leslie. Are there any further questions for her? If not, if you think of anything, we can always um, uh, ask questions at the end. So right now we are going to um, move on to our next panelist, which is, um, sorry, I'm distracted here, trying to get his video presentation up. Uh, Dallas Mitchell from ZAM Communications is our next presenter. And he is going to speak uh, about marketing, primarily about marketing in relation to business and, and not-for-profits. So take it away, Dallas. All right. And thank you, Jenny, for putting this together. Uh, Jenny does a fantastic job of promoting tourism in Eastern Manitoba. And we've had the, the uh, pleasure of working with Jenny and Eastern Manitoba, uh, tur Eastman Tourism, sorry, uh, for the past couple of years, helping them with their marketing and their branding. Uh, today, I just wanna go through some, some basic things about marketing planning. In a forum like this, can't get too detailed, uh, but there is a couple of things that I want, want you guys to keep in mind as you uh, create your marketing plans and, and we get through this COVID-19 uh, crisis and, and the reopening. Uh, strange times, COVID-19 is not unprecedented, but we haven't seen it in our lifetime, uh, a complete shutdown of basically the world economy. Um, so it's a little different. And uh, so to begin, I wanna, uh, we'll go to the next slide. Look at some of the ways that marketing communication has changed since about, I guess, the beginning in mid-March uh, when the shutdown, shutdown was first started to occur. <clears throat> in the beginning, there was a lot of empathy, a lot of we're in this together messaging. Um, Uber had a really great campaign uh, that was stay at home for everybody who can't. Uh, thank you for not riding with Uber. Uber knows that you're going to ride with them where, when, they, when they're on a market once people start moving around, but it's a way for them to keep their brand out there. And consumer surveys have uh, shown that people have really appreciated brands and local businesses doing a lot of the empathy uh, in, in the very beginning. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of messaging that they could create, and this kept them top of mind, and it kept them in sync with how the population was feeling, how consumers were feeling. Uh, as we started to reopen and businesses who could stay open um, began shifting into a lot of how can we serve you. It was very informational, a lot less emotional, and, or, and a lot less brand building. Um, and it was very necessary. Restaurants had to change the way they're were, they were doing things, how they operated, and really needed to get a lot of that messaging out there. And they changed a lot of their business models, a lot more um, curbside and pickup delivery. Uh, and businesses who weren't online or selling online started to sell online. So a lot of that was, was informational and it was necessary. Today we're kind of in this uh, yellow box where we're open. Things are starting to open, restrictions are beginning to fall and people really have COVID fatigue and surveys have been, I've been reading a lot about it. People just, they want it in the rearview mirror. They don't want that messaging anymore. It's always in the news. Um, unfortunately, we're not through it yet. Uh, we're still within the first phase and there could be more uh, first wave and there could be more waves coming. Um, so, and we don't know if that's going to bring up new restrictions or if it's just going to slow the, the reopening. Um, but we can start, we can start to do a lot more messaging where we're communicating on emotion and trying to get people's attention in creative ways. And we, have to be a little bit empathetic, but that doesn't have to be the primary driver of our messages, messages anymore. Um, I think marketing is going to 
the messaging and the advertising is going to look very, very familiar about this time next year. I think it'll be a lot more in our, in our rear view mirror. Um, even this week, I've been seeing uh, in my Facebook feed advertisements for Thief River Falls. Uh, that board is still closed. They're advertising. They're waiting for, for that border to reopen. Um, and that'll lead us to our, into our next slide. <clears throat> for uh, this is one of the big messages I want want to relay today is you have to keep marketing you have to keep communicating with with your customers and with with consumers and COVID-19 has uh, it's a unique economic downturn uh, we get to reposition don't waste this time you get to reposition uh, because if you're introducing new products new services and this is a great time to to release new products, new services. Um, advertising is a little bit cheaper. Right now we have people that are hungry for new experiences. We've been cooped up for two, three months. So this is a great time to, to look at new products, change your targets. Your, the other thing I'll be talking about is making sure you have clear identified um, ideal customers and targets. And because of the extent of the shutdown and the changes that COVID has, uh, has made in our society, you can almost reset your marketing. If you weren't doing things well before, you get to reset, you can almost rebrand. People are open to new messages, new ways of doing things and get fun, experiment. Um, and make sure you have a clear message. This is a great time to start reviewing, clean up your messaging and uh, really hit that target market. And we have to think a lot more local. A lot of the tourism has dried up. A lot of the cross-border tra traffic isn't happening right now. Once the uh, border does reopen, it could shut down again. So our local communities are a little bit more important, I think, when we're relying on a lot of travelers coming through. Uh, up here in Lac Devon, where I am, uh, it's a lot of cottagers, a lot of people coming out here for fishing. That's down a little bit. Um, so companies need to, and nonprofit organizations, really need to refocus on their community and start looking for day and weekend trippers. Uh, there's going to be a lot more of those people who would normally be heading out of province, out of country. They're looking for experiences they can have right in Manitoba. And slashing your marketing budget during a, during a downturn is the worst possible thing to do. It's, it's hard to rebuild. You stop communicating with people. So once the economy starts recovering, you're nowhere to be seen. You stop communicating with people. And that goes for nonprofits. If you have an event, um, you need to, to still connect with those people and need to re reach the right people with the right message. And we have to make better use of our marketing budgets. Um, I know a lot of organizations are going to have to cut some of their marketing budget, uh, but it's very important to at least retain some. And if you can retain all of it, that's even better. Right now, while everybody else is pulling back, you could be communicating to your competitors uh, and to, to people who would normally go to maybe other communities and you get to, to hit them while they're there while those communities are pulling back. A uh, famous example of this is uh, Post Serial during the Great Depression. Uh, Post Serial cut their marketing budget. Kellogg's increased their marketing budget, made major investments in, in radio, and they released Rice Krispies at that time. Uh, they increased their profits by 30% and became a category leader for decades because uh, they took that opportunity to reposition and take market share away. And those fundamentals work not only on the macro scale, but on the local level as well. People are communicating uh, with consumers. You should be one of them. <clears throat> and we'll go into our next slide. Get your basics right. Uh, marketing communication always comes down to the basics. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's we're in good times or bad times. If you're doing the right things, doing the things you need to do, you're gonna flourish in good times and in bad. Uh, your messaging has to be customer centric. The biggest difference between a small business owner who's struggling creating their messaging or doesn't know what to do on Facebook, doesn't know what they should be doing for marketing, they're, um, you're, looking at your, you're looking at your business, uh, professional marketers looking at your customers. All of that messaging flows from the customer. They tell you exactly what, where they are, what they want to hear, and you got to interrupt that and be able to speak to that. 
and you need to be creative with your messaging and consistent. Be using pictures. We're in the tourism industry. Uh, we should have a lot of photos and videos. Put in the work if, you're, if you don't have those. Um, demonstrate to people the experiences. That will, that's what we're selling is experiences. And you can use a little bit of uh, stock photography if you're missing some. Uh, it's better than, uh, particularly what, like posters that you're sharing on social media. Uh, I'd rather use stock than say Microsoft clip art. We see a little too much of that, particularly from the nonprofits. Um, there's just different ways that you can visually make a better representation and people understand and remember visuals a lot more than they do words. Uh, so yeah, get creative and you can experiment now. People, if, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. People are very hungry for, for messaging and new experiences. And there's a lot of stuff happening in Eastern Manitoba. Um, a lot of great experiences to be had and we should really be showing that off in, our, in the best possible way. Um, there's no reason why we, we shouldn't be. And we'll go to the next slide. And we want to drive revenue. If you're a small business, you want to drive revenue. Nonprofits, um, if you have an event or you have attendees, you're selling something, um, you got you to be thinking driving your revenue right now. Uh, tourism spending is down. Um, and it's, it's down here, it's even worse in Ontario, they said about half, and they're expecting at least three years to recover. Uh, we're a little bit more fortunate here. Travel Manitoba is a really good organization and the RTAs uh, in the regions are doing really good work. Um, so first thing you wanna do is know your customer. It's simply done by asking. Uh, you can get a lot of information from them. And then review your messaging. Uh, take what your customers are, who they are, what drives them, and make sure your messaging is in line with um, things that make them take action to, to get them to, to notice you. There's a lot of barriers you, to make a sale that you have to get through. Um, so review your messaging and be creative with that. Uh, when it comes to targeting, uh, you want to target your most likely sale. Um, and this goes for nonprofits and for, for small businesses. Your current customers are the easiest to make another sale from. Um, business and sales is all about the path of least resistance. You've already gained their trust. They purchased from you. Target those people first. Those are always our first marketing dollars when we work with a client is what are you doing with your current customers, your current attendees? Um, and you wanna connect and nudge. This is a great time for deals. Uh, I don't like sales. I don't like deals. I like holding value. But when you, when you use it properly, we're looking at right now reconnecting with people who have not been out. So you want to nudge them to, they're going to go somewhere. You want it to be with you. This is a great time to protect that lifetime value of that customer uh, by connecting, nudging them to spend money, spend money with you. And then once you get them, you got to service them. If your service isn't there, if your product isn't there, um, you have to be there. That's the only way you're gonna retain lifetime value of a customer. And let's go on to the last slide. Everybody has homework. I want people to be thinking about their customer personas. The big thing I wanted to get through today was keep marketing, keep communicating. This is not the time to cut your budgets. This is not the time to stop. Um, and when you think about your marketing, it's a great time to get creative. You have to know your customer. There's certain things that drive customer behavior. Uh, there's certain things you want to know. And don't, like we all do this, but we kind of think of it as our event or our business is for people who like this or that. Uh, you want to get a lot more specific. Think of an individual. This person has a name, an age, a gender, a career. Uh, they, they, they have a marital status, whether they're single, common law, what have you. They may, may or may not have children. Um, normal customer personas in, say, like a business-to-business -business situation, you're not really worried about that so much. It's more demographics and, and, and salary and what their pain points are. In tourism, we don't have pain points so much. We're selling experiences, um, and we are not recession-proof. So 
there's a lot more personal information that is a little bit more um, relevant to selling experiences. So that's where married and having children has a, has a big thing to do with a lot of what, what a lot of tourism businesses and nonprofits are selling. So ask those questions. You want to do, you want to think of who you f you're for, and you also want to find out who you're already attracting, who notices you already. Um, and the easiest way is to ask them. Uh, we do a lot of customer surveys. And uh, while you're getting basic information about how you're doing, how your service is, you can get a lot of that demographic information that you need, a lot of that personal data that you need. People will, will still fill that out. And you'll get a lot, you'll get a good idea on who, who you're attracting. For an example, we do a lot of work with uh, Lactobani Ice Fishing Derby. And we put surveys out every year not only asking about their experiences, changes, let them give suggestions, but we also do ask some of the, the demographic stuff and the, and the things we want to know. Um, similar interests is a big thing, particularly in, in uh, tourism. Similar interests helps your targeting. So in the ice fishing derby's case, obviously if they're there, they like ice fishing. Uh, safe assumption that they like open water fishing to some degree. Uh, and our surveys have confirmed that. Um, and then what else do they like to do? They usually like hunting, they like snowmobiling, they're outdoors people. So when we go and we put together the campaigns, we're able to target those interests because we can look, we don't have to just look for people who like fishing and ice fishing. We can think a little bit, a little bit further ahead. Um, a lot of them are families, so we can find places where we can find places there. And then that also helps us adjust the experience, what happens at the Derby. These are very important things that, to, to know um, and to listen to the customer. All the messaging that we create from that, all of that comes from the customer because we get to know the customer. And I really want people to think about that today. And uh, uh, HubSpot has some good templates uh, that you can go to, hubspot.com. Uh, you can just do a Google search form. Um, but find out the information that you, that you need to know and what you think is going to be relevant. And go to the final slide. And if you have any questions, you can always drop me a line. Um, we, we work with a lot of small businesses. We're uh, doing a lot more training and development in, in the marketing industry. And uh, always love to talk shop. So. Thank you, Jenny, for having me on today. I'm not sure where I am for time, if, I'm, if I blew through that too quickly or if I was uh, just good. So, <laughs> send it back to you. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. I, and I, you brought up a really good point. I really like how you brought up um, doing a survey after, uh, like for the not-for-profit sector, um, bringing up surveys after the event takes place so that um, those event organizers can look at ways of improving their event or make changes or add additions to it. So I think it's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Hey, so Dallas's contact information is there. And if you have any questions at any time, he's open to conversation anytime about marketing. He loves marketing. So, um, so I'm going to now bring up the next slide share. So please bear with me. Uh, where are we? Mm -hmm. So our next presenter is Lindsay Egan, or pardon me, <laughs> it's another Lindsay, Lindsay Otto. Um, and she um, is with Community Futures Winnipeg River. And just give me a second here. I'll pull up the first slide for you, Lindsay. And then we can get you started from the beginning. Okay, so uh, this is Lindsay Otto, who will speak to us on the different programs that Community Futures Winnipeg River has available to businesses that are either starting out or maybe they're established businesses. Um, and there's, they have a lot of uh, different services and programs available. So go ahead, Lindsay. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Lindsay Otto. I'm the Business Development Coordinator at Community Features Winnipeg River. 
Um, I'll just get you to go to the next slide, Jenny. Um, so we're a community-based regional economic uh, development agency. Uh, we've been in Lac de Bonnie since 1988, and we serve the Northeast Man region of Manitoba. So that's pretty much everything north of uh, Highway 1. Uh, we go all the way to Bisset and then to the Ontario border. Uh, Triple R Community Futures is located in Morris and they do Southeast Man region pretty much. Uh, we typically offer pretty much the same services. Uh, so you can contact whichever region or whichever community your uh, business or nonprofit is located in and that would be the office that would serve you. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're located at Fort Park Avenue in uh, Lac de Bonnie, and our services are free to anybody uh, in the region. So I'll get you go to the, the next slide. Uh, I'll just go over what services, uh, we kind of have two streams. We either do community development and then we also do business development. So on the community development side, uh, we do assist nonprofit organizations, um, municipalities, we do a lot of work with, uh, chambers of commerce, that sort of thing. So what we can help with is strategic planning. Uh, we do put on workshops and presentations from time to time. Um, it can assist with project development. If your group is looking for a grant, we can provide grant uh, search assistance. And then also like for your grant uh, proposal, we can provide feedback to help strengthen that if you are applying for a grant. Uh, I'll get you to go to the next slide. Uh, under business development, so we do help, as Jenny mentioned, um, existing and new businesses. Uh, we have a variety of information available to assist uh, businesses. Uh, we have business plan templates for anyone that needs help with business plan. Uh, lots of times I'll provide feedback if you're while you're developing your business plan. If you're going for financing or for a grant, I can review that for you, help uh, strengthen that. We can assist with uh, some help with marketing, financial assistance, and then we also have a lot of information uh, on other business resources and training opportunities that are available. So if you're ever looking for anything, just feel free to contact our office and then, you know, I can talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, kind of what you'd be looking for and sort of point you in the right direction on that. Uh, so I'll get you to go to the next slide. Uh, another key service we offer is uh, our loans program. So we do have loans up to $150,000. Uh, it is for new or existing businesses. Uh, lots of times we find there's a misconception out there that our, our loans are only for new businesses, and that's not the case. It, it could be for any existing business, or if you're looking to purchase uh, an existing business, it can certainly be used for that as well. Uh, our interest rate is generally uh, the Bank of Canada Prime plus three, up to uh, five years. Uh, and, it, and if the loan, we will do larger uh, loans uh, to six to 10 years and then it's prime plus four. So that may uh, differ with CFRRR. Our loan maximums are the same, but sometimes our terms are different. So you'd have to check that if uh, that is the office that you'd be contacting, uh, that could be a bit different. Uh, and then we also, we require that applicants invest 10% of the total funds required. And uh, one good thing about our program is there's no penalty for early repayment. So lots of times we do um, help new businesses that aren't, maybe aren't able to access financing through their regular bank simply because there's no history and it, it may be a higher risk. So we'll take on that risk and then, you know, after a couple of years, they may have some financials to show and they can get uh, funding through the bank. So they pay us out and move the loan over there. Okay, the next slide. Uh, so this is a program now that we've just, uh, we finally received the funds to start distributing uh, last week. So this is a COVID-19 related program called the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund. Uh, and this is the Community Futures Stream because there is another stream through uh, Western Diversification, which I'll talk about after. Uh, but this is for any rural small businesses that were um, impacted by COVID-19. And uh, it provides up to $40,000 um, in funding for operating costs only. So it can't be used for things like to purchase any new fixed assets, um, to pay out a loan of any sort like that, but any of your ongoing operating costs, uh, property taxes, wages, um, rent, those sort of things can be covered under that program. So uh, the good thing about it is there is no interest and no payments if you uh, do get approved for the funding uh, right till December 31st, 2022. 
Uh, and if the loan is repaid by then, 75% uh, does become forgiven. So on a $40,000 loan, uh, you would be looking at about $10,000 that could be forgiven. If the loan, um, if 75% of it isn't repaid by then, it does turn into a regular term loan as of uh, January 2023, and then regular payments would start occurring, and uh, the loan would have to be paid by December 31st. So I do have the link on the, the bottom there to the portal um, where you could uh, apply for the program. Uh, you would click on that and then you can type in what community your business is located in and it'll direct you to the correct community futures office portal. Uh, you can go in and it's a pretty simple process. Um, I think it's seven or nine pages of information that you have to fill out, um, upload uh, previous financials, things such as that. Uh, basically what we're looking at to be eligible for this is that you had a viable business prior to COVID-19 and then once COVID hit, um, you know, showing the effect that that had on your business and that it could be a viable business uh, again. So, um, okay, I'll just go to the next slide. Uh, so then this is just a, a bunch of what the other programs are being offered through the federal government uh, for COVID-19. And some of them are quite similar, but uh, they have been adjusted as, as you all know, they've been coming out pretty quickly uh, just to get this help out to the businesses. Uh, so the first one was the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. So that uh, provides financial support to employed and self-employed um, Canadians. You can receive $2,000 for a four week period. And from what I understand, uh, they're looking at expanding that program to last through summer, but we'll be waiting on details of that. The next one is the Canada Emergency Business Account. Um, so this one is quite similar to the RRF that is now coming through our office, but this was one of the first programs that was announced. Uh, originally, sole proprietorships couldn't uh, apply. There was some criteria that kind of made them ineligible. That has since changed. Uh, so it is another interest-free loan up to $40,000. Uh, to apply for it, you would go through a financial institution. And on that website, it does give you a, a link of what banks are doing it. And I, I did take a look. There are quite a few in Manitoba, including credit unions. So uh, some people find it easier just because if you're already dealing with that bank, you can apply directly through there. Uh, and it's the same criteria. 25% is forgiven if it's paid on or before December 31st, 2022. Uh, and it's to be used for operating expenses as well. Uh, and then the next one, this is also similar. This is the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund uh, through Western Diversification. So this is uh, very similar to the Community Futures Stream as well, uh, but sole proprietors are not eligible for this uh, funding. And the funding is larger. It's from $40,000 all the way up to a million dollars. Uh, and for this one as well, uh, urban, like if your business is located in Winnipeg, in Manitoba, that would be the only place we consider urban, uh, you can apply for that as well. Uh, the next one is the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. So the wage subsidy is 75% uh, of employee wages for up to 24 weeks. Uh, and this does go retroactive from uh, March 15th all the way to August 29th. Um, to understand, like I, I was looking at this website and there is a lot of information on there. You can, uh, they have a calculator where you can put in kind of what the amounts are for your employee to figure out exactly what you would be eligible for. Uh, the next one is the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance. So that one is an unsecured forgivable loan uh, to eligible, it's to your commercial property owner. So you really have to work with your uh, landlord to be able to access this as they'd be the ones applying for it. Uh, but it does provide the tenant with a 75% rent reduction for April, May, and June. Uh, and they are, uh, you can still apply applications are being accepted until August 31st. Uh, and this is through the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Okay, the next slide. Uh, the next, these are uh, provincial programs that are available. Uh, so this is the Manitoba Gap Protection Program. Uh, so that one provides a one-time 6,000 non-interest bearing forgivable loan, which is basically a grant uh, to small businesses who are not eligible for federal programs. Uh, so with that one, as of January 2021, they will require you to make a declaration that you haven't accessed any other um, forgivable, uh, even from a loan, 
uh, up to that date, because if you do, uh, then you're no longer eligible for the $6,000 if it's over 6,000, and then it does become a repayable loan, which has to be paid back to the province. So that's just something to keep in mind, because that would include the wage subsidy. If your wage subsidies are more than $6,000, any of those sort of things, um, it could affect if you've already applied for the gap protection program. Uh, and then a newer one that was announced by the province was the Manitoba Summer Student Recovery Job Program. Uh, so employers are eligible to receive a reimbursement of $7 per hour up to a maximum of $5,000 for each student employed between May 1st and September 4th. Uh, it's provided in a lump sum payment at the end of the, the student's term of employment. Uh, they have to be a new hire for the spring and summer months and starting May 1st or later. Uh, and employers can be subsidized to hire up to five students. So it is, uh, it is quite a good program if you are able to access it and uh, help students looking for work this summer. Uh, and then finally, the Manitoba Economic Support Center. Uh, so once these programs started rolling out, the province did set up a call center so that you can speak with a service representative to learn more about all of these programs because and they are changing terms constantly. Um, so I would recommend if you are looking specifically like which one you would be eligible or what, you know, the, exactly the, the requirements are to for sure give them a call uh, and they can direct you to um, what would work best for your business. Okay, and then the next slide, because I went through that pretty fast. Uh, was there any questions um, specifically to any of the programs? Doesn't look like there is right now, Lindsay. There may okay. be. Uh, I do questions. actually have one question about yeah. the Manitoba Gap Protection Program because I didn't want to assume debt for my business while we're in COVID pandemic mode. So I applied for that, got it. And in the meantime, before I had applied for that, I had applied for a different grant, which is not actually a federal body. It has nothing to do with the federal government. Does it have to do with the province? Does that no? affect? Nope. Nope. It's a national organization, but they're not a federal organization. They're I, not federal I government. don't think that would affect it then. It's as if you haven't received any government funding. So if it's not government related, that should be fine. That um, was my understanding too. And I ran it by my accountant and he's like, I'm pretty sure a private enterprise is not government. So yeah, like I, I did a bit of research on it and I don't think so. Like, I think you should be fine. You may want to double check with them, but well, uh, from what I, yeah, what I understood, it was only government uh, funding, any government funding that would affect that program. Very good. That's great. Yes. Any other questions for Lindsay? You can always pop them in the um, chat box as I pull up the next slide presentation. And I, I see we're getting close to 11 o'clock. So I'll make it very brief. Um, in my screen share here. Okay. From beginning. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to tie it all together here. Um, so what I've gleaned uh, through this pandemic and how it relates to tourism is uh, just a few little tidbits uh, that I'm going to present to you. Um, and one word that kept coming up was pivot. So it's, it's the new catchphrase, right? So everybody's been pivoting their businesses, their um, being more flexible, they're resetting what they're doing. Um, so it, 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 there's a, I always see a silver lining in the cloud. And so this is probably our silver lining. It's given this opportunity to reset what we've been doing up until now. Um, so this here is a really good example of pivot, pivoting your business. Um, so this cafe, um, they reduce the frequency of contact with people by offering counter service. So they still have the same product but it's just a different format on how they're presenting it. Um, and they're looking at, you know, more green initiatives as, as well, which is part of our focus in the tourism industry. 
Um, so, and as part of that pivot too, is there's been reduced hours, reduced capacity, laying off of staff, the new cleaning protocols, uh, your marketing is shifting, um, and all these event cancellations as well. Um, and, and just from what I've observed on social media um, and how the industry has pivoted their, the way they're doing things, they've been very creative. And I, I just wanted to put out kudos to all of you because you know, it could have been, it was, it could have been a really hard thing, uh, but everybody seemed to be very flexible and they shifted what they were, what they were already doing. Um, so they were doing their best at aligning to this new normal. So what we're recognizing too is um, it's always been there, but even more so now is to really specialize in what it is that you're doing. Um, there's a saying that we have, do what you do best and partner the rest. <clears throat> so if it's something that doesn't align with um, who you are and what you're doing, what your passions are, then, then focus on those passions, not all the other stuff. So do some partnering with other people. Um, this is really, really important um, because visitors, when they come and they experience what you're doing, they recognize your authenticity. Um, that's something you can't fake. So if you love what you do, people are gonna see that. They're gonna feel that. Um, and it will really make their experience more, um, more special. Um, so we all like deals in Manitoba, but um, we're talking about maybe charging a higher price point for some of the experiences that you're putting out there. Um, so part of the deal could be the same price that you've been charging, but add value to it. So it could be an extra little experience in there or maybe a gift for all of your customers right now, that kind of thing. So um, and if you're enhancing the experience, yes, charge more money. There are people who will, who will pay for that. Um, and then there is a saying out there, so uh, the further away, the more they'll pay. So keep that in mind. Uh, smaller groups too is another thing. Um, so again, a uh, higher price point with, for those smaller groups, um, more specialized, um, really zeroing in on um, that small group experience. Um, so that's something to think about as well, especially for events. Um, a lot of events now, uh, outdoor events, I think uh, are gonna increase to 50, or pardon me, no, 100 people on the 22nd. So focusing on, focusing on those smaller groups. Slower travel as well, right? Um, through this time, um, there's no international marketing. So it's all local traffic, as Lindsay, Lindsay had mentioned, that 84% of the spend was on domestic travelers. Uh, that was pre-pandemic. Uh, so it'll take some time to get back there, um, but uh, focusing on, on that uh, demographic. Uh, rejuvenators is an emerging demographic. So there are specific demographics that uh, we focus on in tourism and uh, we see uh, rejuvenators as an emerging demographic. Uh, those are the people who are looking for uh, retreats. They um, wanna get in touch with nature. Um, they're, they're much slower travelers. They wanna slow things down because we're all really busy. Um, so, and another big thing too, is making your visitors comfortable. There's, a, there's been surveys out there um, where people are still kind of afraid to travel. And so making them feel comfortable, showing them that you're using those protocols. What are you doing for, you know, cleaning? Um, what are your cleaning protocols? They wanna feel safe. Um, so one program out there right now by MTAC is the Clean It Right program, and we would highly recommend that you take this. Um, I won't get into it, but I can give you more information after. Um, so pre-registration of uh, events or sales, um, 
showing the dis displaying your physical distancing signage, sanitizers at the entry, um, and doing digital sales is, is uh, really uh, important as well. So diversify, you wanna diversify your target markets. Um, so whether you're not for profit or a business, there's room for diversity. So creating those package experience that appeal to a variety of visitors, um, and, and those are the demographics uh, that uh, I had mentioned, those main ones that we focus on. So think outside the box. Um, so for example, an image here, this is the, the, the Sprague Museum, and they have a barber shop display set up. So if you can imagine that if this museum um, brought one customer in and um, had a professional hairstylist there cutting hair in this authentic uh, barber shop, I think would be an amazing experience and people will pay more for that. So it would be a great fundraiser for this, for this museum. So I'm hoping they're listening and they'll run with that idea. Um, so think outside the box, right? People want those experiences as Dallas mentioned, mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, and so when you focus on diversifying your customer, like for example, a lot of the Northern Lodges and Outfitters are really struggling because their primary market was international. They didn't focus on provincial markets. So uh, now they're starting to shift um, and pivot their business to focus on more Manitoba traffic. So we have a question here. Oh, yay, Monique Chenier in Sunrise Corner is listening. So she'll pass on that message about the uh, idea fundraiser for that museum. So diversifying your, your target market is really important. Um, I'm just clicking for the next slide here. So another part of uh, what rejuvenators like and even authentic experiences and, and cultural um, experiencers, they would like that wilderness and the wellness um, experiences. So there are more outfitters and guided um, excursions popping up. So we're really happy to see that. Uh, whether it's hiking, paddling or outdoor survival, that's all on the rise and wellness retreats as well. Um, and again, focusing on those local visitors, not the international market. Um, we leave the international marketing to Travel Manitoba, um, but we want to be ready when, they, when those international visitors come. Um, so I don't know if you, some of you noticed on social media, a lot of um, sites, tourism sites around the world, those really, really heavily traveled ones. Um, because there were no visitors, there seemed to be a um, regeneration of nature and animals coming back to those places and um, grass started to grow again, that kind of thing. So it was a really amazing reset um, for all of us. Um, so that's the basic of uh, what I wanted to present to you, what I've um, learned through this pandemic. Um, and so if there are any other questions right now about that. This here was an experience in uh, Lac de Bonnie, the Lac de Bonnie Historical Society. They um, invited this group out to do some um, some role play with visitors, which was pretty pretty cool. Okay, so if there's no questions. Um, I wanted to thank our panelists for your time. We know how busy you are, and and we really appreciate you taking the time for us today. So to tie it all together, we have amazing resources at your fingertips. So I would. I will provide some of those contact, uh, contact information on each panelist at the end. Uh, we will also have a recording of the session for you available. Uh, we'll probably get it up on our website. Um, so now is the time to engage with these experts and talk about your needs because once we enter phase three of this recovery, Manitobans will be looking for places to go and things to do as Dallas mentioned earlier. Um, so 
don't wait. Um, things will, will start to happen very quickly. So stay engaged with us and those on the panel today because we're all in this together and we can't wait to start exploring our own province since we can't really go out of province at this point. Um, and we all know that home is where the heart is. And I think Travel Manitoba did a great job at picking that tagline. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone stay well. Uh, we will have some contact information uh, for you in a follow-up email. And there were, I don't think there's questions here. There's a few comments about uh, people are happy to have participated. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And if there's no other final comments or questions, we can close for the day. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks for having me, Vinny. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you Thank to Lindsay, you. the other Lindsay, and to Leslie. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Great day.